Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fam Sports New York Varsity. I'm your host, Frank Langella, joined by my co host, Marsilio Langella and Mars. This is our team preview show for Class B, uh, Section 1B. And uh, we want to welcome our fans for joining us. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. And uh, for those that are new, that we cover Section 1 football, we cover the games, we do player breakdowns, we um, give analysis. So make sure you guys follow us on all our social media accounts, which you can see on the screen. And uh, make sure you guys, if you want to access our content, you can at uh, fansportsny.com. Our website has all our content on there. So does our social media accounts. And uh, if you want to donate to the show, you can on our website and uh, merchandise as well. So if you guys want to check any of that out, make sure you uh, go on to fansportsny.com. And for this show, again, we're going to be focusing on Section 1B and talking about the teams in there and, you know, Again, we talked to a bunch of coaches, not all the coaches. We're going to be talking about projected starters. And again, you know, we're going into game week. So teams have been practicing for two weeks of scrimmages going on. Um, so, you know, projected starters is based on the roster last year, based on some of the conversations we had with the coaches. It doesn't mean that there was guaranteed spots anywhere, right? And if we don't mention your name when we bring it up, it doesn't mean we don't think you're an important player. Um, again, I think it should be a, something of a motivating factor <laughs> for you, right? So that's just something I want to get there, get out the way. But, Mars, let's dive into it, and we'll talk about B as 10 teams. The last time we had a section title, which they did do in the spring, Byron Hills won it. Um, so Byron Hills is the defending champion. They won over Westlake. And this time around, uh, the B division is separated into what's called the North and South Division, there's 10 total teams, so five in each side. And the top four teams on each league make it into the playoffs. So that's how it's going to work. And if you want to see tiebreakers, Kevin Devaney does a really good job of breaking it down um, on his Bracketology page on uh, kdjblog.com. So if you want to go see how the how the tiebreakers work and stuff like that, you can definitely go check that out. But we're going to start with the North League Mars. Then we're going to go to the South League, and then we'll give some bold takes at the end, which uh, you can either buy or sell my bold takes. But let's dive into it, and let's start in the North. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is Westlake. And um, they played Byron Hills in the in the 1B Championship, coached by Coach Castellano. Um, they went 3-2. and two. They lost to Byron Hills. And, you know, they, they graduated a lot of seniors. And Coach, you know, when I spoke to him, they know that they're going to be young and experienced, but they have athletic players. And... Um, Not only did they lose a bunch of players, they also lost some coaches on the staff, and they've had to replace a few. And they brought in Coach Eitri, who was the former coach of Peak Skill, and Coach Vito DeBells as the offensive coordinator. Um, So they brought in some more coaches to to help with with this young team. And offensively, they're going to go into more spread concepts, Mars. They're drifting away from the wing tee stuff. They did that, you know, they did a lot of spread concepts in the spring, but expect to see a lot more RPO stuff. Um, but defensively, we know that's what Westlake, they, they take pride in their defense and they want to be aggressive. Um, they want to penetrate and cause a lot of havoc. But looking at the players coming back, Mars, they have zero offensive players coming back uh, from the spring or starters. Uh, zero on the offensive line. Got to replace their quarterback. And defensively, they only have one coming back. And when you look at players that talk about Mars, the first guy we have to talk about is the guy coming back on defense, which is moving to the quarterback spot. He's going to be playing both ways, quarterback and linebacker. I love that. It shows the toughness right there. Anthony Archie, Archiello. And uh, he's a senior. He is tough. He is physical. He's athletic. And to me, he's going to be the breakout player for this team, and he's going to need to because he's going to carry a heavy burden on both sides of the ball. But uh, another guy, Dan Costa, the junior. Offensive lineman and nose guard. He got reps on varsity as a sophomore. Big kid. Going to have to be one of those guys that anchor the line. But a couple other guys. A couple halfbacks. Glenn Ahern. Luke Vasio. A tight end. Anthony Uvino. Who was a good blocking tight end for them. Uh, one of the safeties who coming back. Who's got some rotational reps. Luke Lacido. And then Connor Murphy is the inside linebacker. Who's a small guy. But he's not afraid. He's going to flow well. He's going to stick his nose in there. And these are some kids who got rotation. Again, not starters, but there's some experience. And they're going to have to take a much bigger role, Mars. I mean, you know, you only bring back one starter out of 22. There's going to be a lot of inexperience. And that's, to me, the biggest question mark. But what to watch for? I think this defense will be fast. I mean, Westlake always produces some fast, tough kids. And they're usually pretty sound defensively. So that's what I'm anticipating from Westlake. Going to the next team, Mars. In the north, Nanuet, and that's coached by Coach Carbone. I actually went to uh, a scrimmage today with them at Brewster, 
and uh, they went uh, two and four in 2020. I didn't get to speak to the coach, but you know, offensively, they love doing that power running game. They have an athletic quarterback who does a lot of bootlegs and running, and they have a physical defense against the run, and, and that's what they pride themselves on. Um, but they did lose at least three offensive linemen, and it's going to be tough. They got to replace some some running backs. They got to replace linebacker Ryan and safety Edwards. So you know, there's some talent that's that's going to be missing. But looking at players to watch for this team, it's got to start with James Moran, the running back and defensive back, the junior, 5'11", 170 pounds, Frank's finest, probably their most explosive runner, um, and this is a guy you can hit the hole hard and really create big chunk plays. And another kid. Another explosive player is their quarterback, and that's Ryan Fra uh, Frondi, the senior. Shifty, quick. You know, I really thought he was improving as the season went along in the spring. A real threat on bootlegs. Uh, when he gets out in space, he can cause a lot of havoc. Um, and then a couple other guys, you know, not some well-known, but Hollis, uh, Hollis Bryson, running back and linebacker, six feet. This kid was a bull downhill runner. He's going to have to be another guy who picks up the, in a physical running game. He's going to have to get those hard-earned runs. And a wide receiver, Nick uh, Lanasi, this kid, 6'2", 175 pounds, going to be a safety blanket. Nice big target. He had, I believe, a nice catch in the scrimmage today. And then, obviously, on the line of scrimmage, both offensive and defensive line, to run that power running game and to be physical in the run game, you need to have some linemen. And a guy like Liam Kleber... Dylan Martini, these, you know, these are some of the potential names that are really going to have to step up on both fronts for them to uh, do what they like to do. Um, Marsh, which team do you want to talk about? I'll talk about Nanuet. I mean, Nanuet is a very gritty team. They've always stayed tough in every single uh, game they played in. Um, I think that they do have a lot of athleticism, specifically when it comes to the quarterback position at Ryan Ferrandi. Um, I think that he's probably the most dangerous player that's on Nanuet at right now and um i think he's the most dangerous when they you know they just line him up to say hey let's go do quarterback power or quarterback bootleg and let's see what he can do and i think he has a lot of shiftiness he has a lot of uh, a lot of ability a lot of awareness as a quarterback and also just a playmaker on the run that allows him to be a, be this key player that every defense now has to key in on yeah. i think he, and that's something that is um you know, should be applauded for a guy that you know at a quarterback position it, it you know, a lot of times they don't always expect the quarterback to be one of the most athletic guys in the field. But when well, you look you see at that B, more, you see yeah, that more and more now at, at, in the high school level. Yeah, in the high school level. Yeah. But I think I was going to say specifically in B, right? You yeah. see that happen more often than not, yeah. and I, I think that's something that is a pretty dangerous thing to see uh, if you're a defensive coordinator. Yeah, and he's not a very big guy, but I tell you, he he's just shifty and he's he's hard to get a good hit on him. Um, but let's go to another team in the North Division. That's Byram Hills, the team that won it. Um, not the North Division, but one one uh, B in the spring, and and they're coached by Simon Burke, who this is replacing long time, well, pretty long time coach Doug Carpenter, um, who had a lot of success with them. And uh, Coach Burke is going to have a lot of kids who've graduated in the spring. He's going to have to you know replace a lot of people, and they went six and zero. They won the one B sectional title over Westlake, like we mentioned before, and uh, I'm pretty sure it was their first. Uh, B sure title in B school title. history, yep, right? I'm pretty sure. And, um, you know, they had back-to-back -back winning seasons for the first time since 2013-2014. So, again, they hit a pretty big milestone in the spring, and I'm excited to see how they bounce from that. And offensively, you know, they're going to have a bit of a different philosophy. They're going to run multiple offense. They're going to run some gun wing tee, some spread. And they're really just going to look to play through the strength when I spoke to coach, play through the strength of their personnel. And, and on defensively, they don't want to overcoach, and that was a big message that he tried to set. Um when I had my conversation with him, and they just want to get better as the season goes along. They know it's going to be an experience, but they do think they have some talent there. And uh, looking at the players they got to replace, offensively, Mars, two of the 11 coming back from the spring team, one out of five on the offensive line. They do have to replace their quarterback, and they lost some serious guys like Weiler, Fruling, Franco. There's some heavy firepower that they lost. And on the defensive side, three of the 11 starters coming back and lost a guy like Ratson. Uh, Abe and Marco. So, you know, th there's definitely going to be some new faces. People are going to have to step up. But looking at those kind of players um, that I'm talking about, the first one I got to start at the quarterback spot in Jared Cohen. Coach talks about this young man being a natural leader, baseball player. He was, when I spoke to Coach last time, was leading the way in the quarterback battle. I'm interested to see who comes out on top. But I think Jared had a good shot. Another guy, Michael Rocco, cornerback, wide receiver, running back. He was a Frank's finest at the defensive back. This kid, senior, solid speed, physical. Um, Going to have to take on a bigger role on both sides of the ball. But he saw significant minutes 
or significant plays at the defensive side of the ball. Another guy that Coach raved about his work, Gavin Javorski, the junior, running back and defensive back. This kid 5'10", 170 pounds. Coach really praised the work that he put in during the summer. Another guy, uh, Ben Dre Langer. Coach talked about him as well, another two-way player. Um, and another guy, Sean Siegel, because we talk about quarterback, but how about his weapons, right? Wide receiver Sean Siegel, junior, 6'3", 175 pounds, nice big target. Um, and and Gino uh, Secchiano, another wide receiver and defensive back. So you can see they're going to have some talent out there. Guys are going to have to step up, not a lot of experience. And then you go to the offensive and defensive line, because up front is going to be big. They have to replace four linemen, and one guy... He's going to have to help anchor that Mars is Zach Gluckman, the junior. 6'2", 250 pounds. Frank's finest. This kid has raw potential. Versatile that he played center and tackle. This is a guy who's going to really have to anchor down. And, and George Galage, I, and, you know, I had him as a underrated type player at the defensive tackle spot, possibly some offensive line as well. This kid's 6'4", 230. Byron Hills is going to have some size. It's can they get mended together? Can they, you know, get that chemistry that you know the importance of that offensive line? Um, because if they can, I think their pass attack is going to be pretty good. Now, if we go to another team in the North, Pearl River, Mars, coached by uh, Michael Leva, Coach Leva, in 2020 was a bit of a struggle. Uh, the spring, excuse me. They went 0-4. So it was a bit of a struggle. They hit some COVID issues. They hit a bunch of injury issues. And, and Coach talked about, listen, they want to return to some hard-nosed football, um, and, and he wants to see these kids step up and, and execute and finish and, and just uh, – Take that tough spring season and and kind of motivate them to go even further. And they're going to bring back some players. I mean, offensively, five of the 11 projected starters back, two out of the five on the offensive line. They're bringing back their quarterback. Defensively, five of the 11 starters coming back. And some of the kids, it's got to start with the biggest kids, that, you know, for this team to, to move forward is Jack Responti, defensive lineman, offensive lineman. He was a Frank's finest, really versatile guy, captain, four-year varsity player, multi-sport guy, smart football player. Coach raves about him. And then a couple other names. I mean, you mentioned they bring back their quarterback, Ryan O'Neill, the senior. He showed some nice things. He's got to continue to build, make less mistakes. And if he can, there's another veteran quarterback. And running back, defensive back, Nick Par Carbone, 5'7", 170 pounds, shifty runner, right? Not the biggest guy, but he found ways to, to split, uh, in, you know, tight spaces. And he made some plays offensively. And, and a, a few other names, James O'Connell, you know, Liam Morrissey, Jack Kelly, Brendan Davin, Matthew uh, Dennis. These are kids that Coach talked about the work that they put in during the summer um, that he's excited to watch out on the football field, Mars. So, uh, which team do you want to talk about? I'll talk about Brian Hills. I mean, they, they clearly for the past two years are the most dangerous team in B, right? I mean, when you compare, the only other team I could think of that had that same feeling was Ardsley, right? And Byram just, you know, they, they made history for their school, the, for their program, winning their first section title, which is a big thing for them. But the problem is that they lost all, almost all those that, all that talent. And not yep. saying they don't have anyone left behind, but you're losing a guy like Weiler. You know, that's such a – very difficult to just take another dude and just plug him right back in that system. And then obviously you're going to have, you know, a changing coach in your head coach, which yep. is also going to be a big deal. Um, so the big thing is going to be about really relying on the guys who are still there, right? And specifically you look at Zach. Gluck, uh, Glu uh, Gluckman, uh, he's an anchor on the offense and yeah. defensive lines. And you know, Michael Rocco, who's yeah. a corner and wide receiver, is also a Frank's finest that we had selected. And I think that you have to rely on those guys in order for really to, to keep the ship afloat. And yeah. I think that's going to be something that's important. And obviously, a whole new co uh, now it's not a whole brand new everyone yeah. on the staff, but it's going to be a new new captain at the reins so and now you have to really new philosophy you know, new philosophy new, yep. new, you know new everything so it, it's going to be a interesting thing to see whether how the team does progress with a whole new coaching staff and new guys to lead them um so it should be interesting to see but they do have a lot of talent still it's just it's not the same level of talent that they've had last the previous two years really um let's go to another team and a new team joining b and that's bronxville mars by coach uh, maganelli and in 2020, they were 6-0 and in the Class C. They really dominated in Class C. Now they move up to Class B. And I didn't get to speak to Coach, but when you look back at the players, you know, I don't have the projected starters because I didn't speak to the Coach. But, you know, offensive line-wise, they are bringing back at least two of the five offensive linemen. They lost a lot of talent as well. And they lost guys like Donahue, Randall, Murray, three of those starting offensive linemen. And on the defensive side of the ball, you lost, you lost McCormick, you lost Ramundo, 
Uh, and Donahue, again, was a really good two-way player. You know, there's some serious talent that they missed, but they also are bringing back some some studs as well. And it's got to start with their quarterback, Connor O'Neill. And this guy is a weapon. We talked about him as Frank's finest. He was a Frank's finest athlete, 6'4", 215 pounds, dual-threat guy who can hurt you running the ball and throwing, and he's probably going to be the bell cow for this offense. Um, and with good reason. He's very dangerous. He gets into the open field. He can hit that home run, but he also has the arm strength to make some difficult throws. And another guy who really impressed me, outside linebacker and tight end, Chris Kelty, the senior. He's going to be a reliable target on more on offense this year than he was in the spring. Um, Good-sized kid, another 6'4 kid, but as an outside linebacker, he is smooth. I, I think he's he's one of the better outside linebackers, not just in B, but in Section 1, um, and he's going to have to help anchor that defense when they lost a few linebackers from the spring. Looking on the offensive line is another big deal. Preston Mays, offensive tackle and defensive lineman, 6'3", 225 pounds, athletic offensive lineman, another Frank's finest. And, 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 and on the defensive line and offensive guard, Spencer McCormick, another guy, scrappy player, um, you know, tough He's bite your legs. Like, he'll do whatever it takes to get the job done. Really scrappy dude. Um, I like the way he plays. And another guy is a bit underrated. He's a running back, you know, linebacker, defensive back. He's all over the place. Thomas Garofalo. He's a very active guy, and I think he could be a breakout player for this team. He's kind of a glue guy for this for this defense um, that's not talked about enough. Um, but uh, I think he deserves some recognition. And I think he's going to be a really important player for them. And uh, that's actually the last of the North. Uh, Mars, do you have any comments you want to make on Bronxville before we move to the South? I mean, Bronxville is going to be a, a dangerous team. I think that when you look at how they dominated last year and see, it, it, it's a, quite impressive. Now, obviously, yeah. they're not the same team as that group was. But you do have some returning players that are coming back. And I think that's something that you can you, – if you're in B – you should be aware that this team could could be very dangerous, whoever they play it against. And I think that um, you know, it's a lot of times it's hard for a team to play up in a in a, yeah, in a division in, or in a class. But I think Bronxville is good enough that they can compete even in a, a bigger against bigger schools. So I think it should be quite interesting to see. Yeah. And let's move to the South League again. The teams, are, the order is pretty random. So let's start in the South League, and we're going to go to Ardsley, and that's coached by uh, Dan DeFalco. In 2020, they went three and two, um, a year removed from going nine and one, and they've been 500 and better for now nine straight years. This has been a very steady, dominant program in the B class, um, and just that that stat right there shows the consistency. When I talked to coach, he was really excited for this group, Mars. He thinks this group can be special if they stay focused and continue to grind and work through the process. Um, and on, offensively, we know that they are a multiple offense. We talked about it before. Um, but Coach talked about the personnel is going to be a little bit different this time around. They don't have that downhill bell cow running back. But what they do have is a bunch of skill guys. They have a bunch of skill guys, a bunch of you know even shifty running backs. And so you can see their offense is going to be morphing a little bit to get these kind of guys in space. Um, defensively, we know what they are, right? They pride themselves on their defense. They've had a pretty sound defense over the last few years. And when you look at the players coming back, Mars, offensively, they have eight of the 11 projected starters coming back, three on the offensive line. They are bringing back their quarterback. They did lose some good players, right, in Labaris, uh, Matson, Judge. Um, but even defensively, they're bringing back seven of the 11 projected starters. They're bringing back a bunch of talent on a team that I thought was pretty tough, Um and it all starts to me with their linebacker and tight end, Ryan Watson, the senior. He's a Frank's finest linebacker. He's a three-down linebacker. He's a guy who actually contributes in all three phases of the game. 6'2", 215 pounds, one of the best players in B. Um, another kid, obviously the quarterback, Michael Ballard. He was another Frank's finest dual-threat quarterback. Nice release. Saw him make some really nice, tough throws. And if he can, you know, sometimes he actually escaped the pocket too much even when he didn't need to if he could be more disciplined if he can continue to work on his reads this is a guy who can make some serious plays and be a dangerous football player a couple of the other names and we've talked about some of these on the frank finest show but connor jones a wide receiver and cornerback good speed slippery guy uh real nice target jack Phelan, the running back and defensive back i talked about they don't have that same downhill running back guy but i tell you He's going to be their go-to back. He's a shifty guy, and what I like about him most is he's a three-down back. You can put him, he can run routes out of the backfield. He can be involved in the screen game. This is a versatile back. And then we obviously go to the lineman, which I think is going to be a strength for this Arsley team. And we talk about Justin Boimer, the offensive tackle and defensive lineman, George Costas, Christian Dash, 
You know, these are some big boys. Again, not the tallest guys, right? But thick dudes, strong dudes that will punch you in the mouth. And, and they're going to be a big part if Arsley wants to make another run. Um, they're going to have to be dominant. Now, the biggest question to me, and Coach even talked about the chemistry between the wide receivers and quarterback. He really wants to see that grow And the last time I spoke to him. And so we'll see if those practices um, before the season have gotten there. But I think this defensive front seven could be really strong. Now, they do have another linebacker. they got to figure out the inside linebacker to replace Labaris. But they have some talent in that front seven. And even in the back end, I think defense overall could be pretty darn good if they just – there's just a couple holes it feels like, you know, you know these practices are going to solve. Um, let's go to another team, Mars Putnam Valley. And uh, coached by Coach El, El Saucer. I hope I didn't butcher your name, Coach. I feel bad if I did. But in 2020, they went 0-5. It was a bit of a struggle. Again, not too many years ago, that you know they made that uh, miraculous run uh, to the B title game. But Coach is talking about, listen, it's just, he wants to get this program back on track. They want to battle to get to 500. That is the first step of getting back on track. Um, and he knows that there's going to be some inexperience as well. But, again, continue to grind. Continue to step in the right direction is the big focus for this program and, and to build. And you want to see them to take that, that step in the right direction. And you look at the players coming back, four of the 11 on the offense, two out of the five on the offensive line. They do have to replace their quarterback. And defensively, same thing, four out of the 11 coming back. But uh, Coach talked about the, on the defense, they really want to get better on third down. That's going to be a big, important thing for them. And a couple players to watch. To me, I think their most consistent offensive player, Cole Dersher. Running back, wide receiver, and defensive back. 5'9", 160 pounds. Um, to me, I thought he made some really nice plays in the passing game in the spring. Yeah, again, really reliable guy for this team, and I thought one of the more consistent um, in the program. Another guy, Mike Esposito, running back and linebacker. 5'7", 160 pounds, really active guy. Not the tallest, but he's not afraid to get his nose in there, and he was a guy who's always around the ball. And then a couple linemen, Mars Kyle Mello, the junior offensive lineman and defensive lineman. And uh, Hudson Sparaza, another junior uh, offensive lineman and defensive lineman. For Putnam Valley to compete in this South League, which is a tough league, it's going to have to start up front. right? You have to be physical up front if they're going to have a chance. And I think those guys are going to be huge if they want to take a step in the right direction. Mars, which team do you want to talk about? I'll talk about Ardsley. I mean, when you look at of all the teams in B, I, in my opinion, I feel like they are the most dangerous because of the fact they have the most returning players, 8 out of the 11, eight out of the 11 on offense. Three out of the five on the offensive line and seven out of the 11 on defense. It just tells you that they were a young team last year. They were still competing, but now I feel like they're they're really trying to you know elevate their play uh, yep. this coming season. I really think it's going to be dependent on some of the key players, specifically guys like Ryan Watson and Michael uh, Belorge. Um, I, I, they're the Frank's finest that we had selected specifically. When we look at Ryan Watson, he's a three down player. I mean, he's a guy that's going to be coming at you 100 percent every single time he's on the defense and. And when you look at Michael, I think that he is, you know, he's a dual threat style of quarterback. And he's somebody that, you know, can make a play out of, out of nothing. But it's really going to be a culmination of, of talent yeah, that Arsley right. has on this team that I think is going to be very dangerous for, for every team that's on their schedule. And I think that Arsley is, in my opinion, if, if I was looking at this from an outside point of view, I think that Arsley coming with a purpose. I think, you know, Byram was kind of owning the league. For you know a two year period now, Arzee, well, I remember Arzee Arzee beat, them beat them in 2019. Yes. But the point is, is that you know everyone was saying that Byram, since they kind of wiped the floor with everyone in their path this this spring season, right? And everyone was saying that this team, Byram, would have won the states if they had the ability, if they had a state championship tournament. Um, and I think that Arzee is now looking to say, all right, you know, Byram had their fun. Now it's time for us to re, you know, reestablish our role as being the best team in B, and I think that's going to be something that you have to look for. Um, it's going to be a very interesting uh, year for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, for this last part, we got three teams left. We'll go through all three, and then you talk about which teams you want, Mars. So let's go to Hen Hud, uh, coached by John Catano. Um, in 2020, they went four and one. Uh, good spring season um, that they had, and and when I spoke to coach. He set the goal pretty standard. Win the league and compete for a section title is the goal, and the goal is not going to change. Offensively, we know they run that wing tee, run heavy scheme. Defensively, they're that 3-3 aggressive style defense. Um, the defense played pretty darn well, but this is another team that graduated some talent, um, especially on the offensive side of the ball. They're returning four of the 11 starters on the offense, two out of the five on the offensive line. They do bring back their quarterback, which is big, but they lost 
three leading rushers, right? They lost Travis, Artrope, Cepeda, three offensive linemen that were big keys to this this run-heavy scheme. Now, it will help defensively they bring back six of the 11 starters on the defense that had three shutouts, right? So, you know, that is the good part. And when you look at the players to watch, I got to start with the quarterback, Chris McGuire, the senior, 5'10", 175 pounds. Because they lost so much talent at the running back spot, the quarterback is going to have to take a bigger role, and it's going to be big on rollouts, play action, especially at that wing T offense. He's going to have to be a guy who, who picks up the, 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 the slack um, until they figure that part out. Um, and I think this kid has that, that ability that he can. Um, another guy to keep in mind, wide receiver Dan Martinez. Coach really liked the work he put in. He thought he put in a lot of work and deserved recognition, and he told us that this was somebody to watch. But I have to go to the offensive line, right? You know, again, two out of the five coming back, and one of them is our Frank's finest, Kevin Whalen, offensive tackle and defensive lineman. Big body kid. You can move the point of attack. You need that kind of guy who can dry block and down block in a wing T offense. And going to the defensive side, again, they returned it six out of the 11 guys, and it all starts with this guy, Cole Pritchard, the outside linebacker, tight end. He was a Frank's finest on the defense. He's one of their most active defenders, and he was one of their more reliable ones on a very solid defense. To me, the biggest question mark on this team, Mars, is that offensive line finding those three starters. Again, when you run a wing T offense, you need linemen who can move people. Um, and that's going to be really important for Headhunt to get back to competing like they did in the spring season. Uh, the next team I want to talk, Pleasantville, Mars. Coached by Tony Becerra. In 2020, they went 3-3. Three and three. Um, I didn't get to speak to Coach. And they're going to return some guys, too. They also got to replace a, quite a few number of guys, right? Offensively, Mars, five of the 11 starters coming back. On the offensive line, only one out of the five starters coming back from the spring season. They do bring back the quarterback, which is good. But defensively, only three of the 11 starters projected to be coming back. So a lot of guys are replaced on the defensive side of the ball, including one of my favorite guys, Jack Collins. Um, that, that's a big uh, guy on both sides that they're going to have to replace. And McDermott, who I thought was really solid for them. Um, but some of the guys that they do bring back, I have definitely some talent. Running back, wide receiver, and defensive back, Daniel Picard, uh, the sophomore. Frank's finest defensive back, but this guy is their most dangerous weapon and probably going to be someone who really has to carry the load offensively, especially running the ball. Um, and I think he has the talent to do it. This guy, you know, he could be one of those, you know, he, he at the end of this season... He might have the potential to be one of the most, like one of the best players in B by the time the season ends. That's the kind of talent that this young man has. Another guy to keep in mind is the quarterback, Mars Michael LaCapria, the senior, uh, six feet, one hundred seventy pounds, a lefty. And if he can get better, you know, being more decisive, being more confident, you know, I've seen this kid make some nice throws as well. So that's the consistency is the big thing with him. And a couple other guys, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, I do think they can have a pretty good defense. Kieran Cotter, their strong safety. Again, another Frank's Finest guy. Ryan Miller, the inside linebacker we've talked about on the Frank's Finest show, who can help anchor against the run. And then a couple other guys like Don Matika, the cornerback. You know, they can have a pretty solid, you know, like ability at each level. The big question mark is going to be up front. Right, the one starter coming back, Michael Gordon, uh, the center, offensive lineman, defensive line is going to be, you know, a big question mark. How are they going to figure that part out? Who's going to consistently be playing there? And I got to mention the kicker, Marsh John McCarthy, who's always a weapon when you have a good kicker. He was our Frank's finest kicker for Class B. Um, so it's going to be really interesting. But the last team before I pass it off to you to talk, Mars, um, another team that joined the show is Briarcliff, the Briarcliff Hamilton football program. They joined B as well. And uh, coached by uh, Coach Skip Stevens, in 2020, they went 4-0. They beat Albertus Magnus in the Independent Championship. Um, in 2019, they went 7-2. So there's now multiple years that they've played well. It's three straight seasons. Um, I believe three straight over 500 for the first time in 17 years. All right, so quite an accomplishment for the Briarcliff Hamilton football program. And when I spoke to Coach, listen, he says entering B is a really good step for the program. And it absolutely is. And now they want to keep that growing. Right, So, again, a jump up in competition for sure. Offensively, they're bringing back five of the 11 starters, two out of the five on the offensive line. They do have to replace their quarterback. Defensively, bring back six of the 11 guys. And two of the big players to watch, and I think two of the better players in the class, Jalen Savage, the wide receiver and defensive back, a big-time playmaker, and Brandon Raspoli, the running back, wide receiver and defensive back, is one of the more electrifying players 
in the class. But the big question mark is going to be this offensive line, Mars. Uh, who do you want to talk about? I'll talk about Pleasantville. I mean, I, I kind of feel like I know the most about Pleasantville. And I when I, when I look at this team, I look at, firstly, Daniel Picard. And I think he is, like you said already, a very good talent on the defensive side, but specifically on the offensive side. And he has this ability to really make – these explosive plays and and if you've seen him play last year as a freshman you can you can see it easily right and you can just imagine as he as he grows and gets bigger and stronger and faster that this is only going to continue this 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 snowball effect is going to keep going down but as you mentioned it's really going to depend on some of the veteran presence right i mean daniel bucard is just one person and it's going to depend on the guys who are returning starters specifically michael lacapria i think lacapria is uh is a quarterback that like you said needs to be calm and collected and if he can do the things that he he's shown that he has the ability to hit yep. the receivers in these calm moments and he needs to continue to do so and if he can then the offense is going to be very explosive because then you have guys like Kieran Cotter who seems as more being like a power back yep. the the kind of the the thunder to Daniel Bacard's lightning and I think that, that you're going to have that dual threat running game if you can have you know a, a, a stable offensive line front and that's something that you mentioned that was probably the most important specifically when Michael Gordon is now like the, the most veteran player of yes. them all and everyone else is going to be young guys, yep. right? And if those young guys can step up and do what they're supposed to do, then you know that that can really change the dynamic of this offense. If they don't, then clearly it's going to be a, a long season ahead yeah. of them. But there's a lot of guys that you mentioned that you know can always talk, just keep talking on about. But when you know, obviously Ryan Miller is a Frank's finest. Uh, you know, he's a guy that you have to definitely look at on the defensive side. Now, Domitica is definitely a surprise player that has been showing a lot of promise in this offseason as a, as a reliable person to, to target on not even just on the offense, but somebody that can we can rely on for the defense as well. But in my opinion, is it really has to look at the young guys. The guys who are, you know, unproven talent. And this team is going to be one of the youngest teams, in my opinion, in this in this in this league, maybe other than Byron Hills and, and maybe a few others. But I feel like, you know, guys like Eric Coleman, a guy who is who was a pulled up player, right, to join to the varsity side is now becoming more of a presence on the team. He's going to be a guy that we have to look for, right? And if he performs, if all these younger guys like him and Ryan Horrigan perform, who you know Ryan Horgan is a young player that could be a, a starting linebacker projected onto this defense. If they can perform higher than what a lot of people might expect them to do, then this team could be dangerous. And I think that's something that I mean, almost every team, if a young yep. guys perform, that's a dangerous team. Yeah, if they go, if they play higher than expectation, then that definitely changes things. And and that's what you know opportunity presents, right? So do you get the opportunity? Let's see what they do with it. Um, well, those are the teams, Mars. Now I'm going to give some bold predictions. And again, when I give my bold predictions, these are predictions that I feel somewhat confident in. And we're going to see if I'm either a genius or a fool by the time the season ends. Um, but you'll buy or sell. And I have three of them, Mars, for this class. And my first one, I'm going to talk about the league winners. There's a member. There's a North and a South. Going to be a North and South league winner. The top four out of the five go to the playoffs. But there's going to be a regular season winner. And... For me, I know this might be a little surprising, but in the North, I am going to go with Byram Hills, Mars. I think even though Byram Hills is young, inexperienced, I do think they have enough talent. They're going to be one of the most talented teams in that league, and I do think they're going to win enough league games to be the regular season winner in the North. And for the South, I'm going Arsley. I think Arsley has too much talent coming back. They have a strong coaching staff. Um, they're pretty. They're they're humming and they're excited. And I just think they have too much talent for some of the other teams to match. And I think they're going to win, Mars. Are you buying or selling my first bold take? Um, I'm going to sell. I'm going to think – I think – Bronxville is going to be the winner of the North, and I can agree that I think uh, Ardsley might is probably going to win the South mm -hmm. because of their a lot of the returning talent. Um, I think Bronxville has, a, you know, obviously they have a lot to prove. They're jumping up. Yeah, a it's a big jump. It's a big jump, but I think they do have a lot of talent on that on that roster. Well, well, let's see. In my second bowl take, I'm going to stick with Bronxville, Mars. And Bronxville has not had back to back over 500 seasons since 2013, 2014. That's going to happen this year. That is going to break that streak. They're going to be over 500, and they're going to make the playoffs as one of the final eight. 
I mean, you buying or selling that? I would think you're going to buy if they're going to win that division, right? Yeah, I'm going to buy on that one. I think that they, uh, like I said, they probably have one of the more talented rosters because they have a lot of guys that are returning. You have O'Neal as as the, as you know the quarterback, and I feel like that's going to be someone that will definitely give them an edge over a lot of t- a lot of teams. And I think this is just a solid unit because even if you look on their JV, they you know they they were doing pretty well for think, themselves yeah, as well. JV, they went. What was it? I think it was. I'm not sure what the record was, but I think they did have a pretty solid JV, too. So they're yeah, going to be so relying on some of those so guys. You, I mean, that's the thing. You're going to have size. You're going to have speed. You're going to have strength. I mean, that, that's all the calculations you might need for a win that, right there. All right, you're pretty high on Bronxville. Uh, my final t- bull take, Mars, I think Arsley's going to win the section title this year and not just win it. I think they're going to run the table. They're going to go undefeated in section one play this season. Are you buying or selling what I'm, what I'm putting down? Um... I don't know. I feel like when you look at this one, <laughs> you don't know. It's got to be a buy or a sell. There's not a. There's not a push. We don't have a push in this segment. I. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna sell this one. Mm-hmm. I, I. I'm gonna sell because Which you part? know what. I think that I'm going to sell the whole thing. Bo- or? I'm gonna sell both of them. I think wow. that I'm gonna sell the section title, and I'm also gonna sell the undefeated. I think that you know I. I believe Ardsley will win the South Division, but I don't. It's hard to tell. B is a very, is a very diverse grouping of teams, right? They each have their strengths, they each have their weaknesses, and I think there's going to be at least one upset in there. So I, for them to go undefeated, uh, to, to go always to the section title and win, I don't see that happening. Um, and I, I can't also guarantee that they will win the section title. I think it's going to be dependent on a little bit of luck and you know who wins on that day. And you I hear think that, Ardsley? So, listen to this. Listen to what that man's saying. And I just want to remind everybody, Arsley won back-to-back section titles in 2019 and 2018 before the COVID season. And again, Byron Mills had a great run. Uh, but Arsley's bringing back some talent. All right, everyone, that was our show. We appreciate everyone for tuning in. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a little bit of fun, um, obviously, with our takes. But uh, we appreciate you guys again. We hope you... Uh, You have a great rest of your night. Enjoy the football season. We'll see you all very soon.